Good morning. Sorry, I am running just a few minutes late here. Um, it is good to be here in Healdsburg. I'm uh, the Reverend Sally Hubble, rector of St. Paul's Church. And we are having a very foggy morning, waiting for the rain to start in earnest. In earnest. It, um, it's just foggy right now. Damp, but no rain yet. There's our weather report. All right, my friends, I am here for our morning devotion. Um, here in this last week after the Epiphany, before um, Ash Wednesday starts, uh, starts Lent next week. So um, this is sort of the last week of the regular, the um, ordinary time in that season after Epiphany. Um, we jump ahead, starting on Monday, to a different um, part of the daily office readings. So let us begin with our daily devotion. We are working from the Book of Common Prayer, um, page 137. Hello, Linda Maxwell to see you. Um, but don't worry if you don't have a BCP, uh, you don't need one. You can just be along for the ride. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So our reading for this morning, we continue with the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel. We are reading verse 17 through, I think, 31. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 17 through 31. All right. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake. And for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Some of Jesus' um, perplexing and very difficult teaching on wealth and money and um, and eternal life and what brings salvation. Um, so we have the rich man who is unwilling um, to part with all that he owns to give the money to the poor and then follow Jesus. And I understand 
understand that <laughs> reluctance. <laughs> um, I, I, of course, I mean, I think that most of us would be lying if uh, we uh, said that that was a, a clear cut on the teaching of Jesus for us. Um, and then how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. I think the idea is whatever wealth we have in this life has nothing to do with the kingdom of God and quite often it keeps us out of the kingdom of God because we put our focus and attention on that, on that kind of wealth, not on um, the family that we gain through being Jesus' disciple. Um, I think that the idea of that expanding family and the expanding wealth that comes with discipleship is the is um, from the 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 benefits and the of having a new family, the growth into a new family that happens through baptism. Um, that is really the model for the church, for the body of Christ, and the wealth that we experience there. But even then, he says, that is no guarantee against persecution. Um, that we receive all of those things and fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. So the persecutions come with that new wealth, and that's just sort of part of, part of the package. The problem with this, of course, is it's easy for people to interpret um, their um, criticism as being persecuted. Um, it sort of can give people a self-righteous foothold. I'm just thinking about how a lot of um, evangelical evangelical Christians in America, white evangelical Christians in America, perceive themselves as being persecuted. And um, sort of in keeping with this, that, oh, the criticism that we receive is simply part of this persecution that Jesus speaks of. So I think that um, that's where we have to be have a tremendous amount of integrity about why we're doing what we're doing and what is the wealth that we're seeking to hold on to. Like to have a powerful church is a particular kind of wealth. Um, you know, having political clout is a particular kind of wealth. Um, having uh, lots of followers, um, you know, feeling that sense of popularity is a particular kind of wealth that might keep us from the kingdom of God. And we have to always be wary of our own ego and selfishness, um, which is a sneaky thing, <laughs> that ego. Um, so, the first will be last and the last will be first. We have to be willing to let ourselves be last um, in the kingdom of God. I think that's one of the central teachings of Jesus in so many, so many places over and over again. And we have a really hard time with that, of course. Um, I think that in America we have an especially hard time with it because we're so used to being on top, number one, winners, blah, 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 like the most powerful. Um, and I think that, you know, that sort of um, power of positive thinking and assigning a really specific outcome to what it means to be blessed, as in money or a big house or, um, you know, your candidate winning office or, you know, whatever. Assigning that kind of, um, that to, uh, equating that with being blessed is a, is a huge pitfall because I don't think Jesus would say that your big house means that I want to bless you with the big house or I want to bless you with the big salary or I want to bless you with political power. I think that just doesn't work, but we have a hard time sort of separating um, that sense of winning in America and um, with 
with the gospel here. It's a humility that Jesus has that I think is often a disconnect in our thinking. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, my friends, um, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many blessings of our lives. We thank you for the moisture in the air and the coming rain. We thank you for the beauty of this day, the beauty of St. Paul's Church as the Restoration Project nears completion, as our organ comes together, as the wood in the interior of our church glows. And I thank you for all of the many people involved in that project, in our worship, in our congregational life and our communion with one another in ways both big and small. And Lord, I pray that you help us all to train our hearts on your love for us as the true blessing, the central blessing, and let our thoughts center around that. Gracious God, we pray for all who are sick in our midst. We pray for those who are struggling those who are feeling isolated. Lord, I pray that you help us to know your courage, your fortitude, your peace, and your healing in all the ways that we need it. Lord, be with healthcare providers and um, county administrators, government officials who are in charge of rolling out the vaccine for us all and be with those people whose businesses are suffering, who are worried about livelihood. And let us come together, Lord, with a higher calling in seeking our common good. Lord, we lift up before you all those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for Susan and Lou, Juanice, Jennifer, Jean, Kathy, Lisa, Jill, Jim, Michael, Deborah, Alexa, Robert, Robin, Marjorie, Anne, Suzanne, Richard, Alice, David, Christine, JP, Barbara, Cecilia, Frank, Tony, Eric, Alex, George, Tim, Elaine, Tom, John, Rich, Brad, Anastasia, Claire, Elizabeth, Sophia. We pray for the Bowers family and we pray for the Sid Valderas family. We pray for all those who mourn. Lord, I pray that your comfort will cover them like a blanket. In our congregational cycle of prayer, this week we pray for Jennifer Murray, for Yvonne Zivanek, Marty and Jane, and Beth Dodge. And hear us now say the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, my friends. Good to be here with you. Um, take care of yourselves. Stay dry. Let's hope that we get lots and lots of rain and we have to struggle to stay dry. <laughs> um, peace be with you and God bless you. And uh, tomorrow you'll have Linda Maxwell with you. And there's Colleen Carmichael with the heart. Hello, Colleen. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye.